right, welcome to the Organizational Transformation Kung Fu Podcast with your hosts, Sandy Varekia and Jennifer Long. A quick program note, Sandy's audio was distorted towards the end of this podcast. We apologize for any convenience and on with the show. Hello and welcome to the fifth episode of OT Kung Fu, where we, and we, I'm Jen Long, an executive coach in Denver, and my pal Sandy Varekia who is in Toronto, Canada, we get together and talk about essential skills for executives. Hey, Sandy, how are you? Oh, Jan, I'm great. Thanks. Happy to be here. Great. Sandy and I practice executive coaching Kung Fu every day. So that's the art and study of helping executives transform. Maybe, Sandy, you can tackle the OT Kung Fu and what that means for those who may be joining us for the first time. For sure. We had a lot of fun making up this name. OT Kung Fu is the short version for Organizational Transformation Kung Fu. And it really, really well describes the art of Kung Fu as the study, learning, or practice that requires patience and energy and time to complete. And we believe for sure that organizations could learn a great deal from this practice. And we think it's the perfect metaphor for organizational change. So what... We're going to make change in for today. We're going to talk about change around conflict. In fact, we're calling it productive conflict, which is a ch- which is a change in and of itself, right? Most people just mm-hmm. think of conflict as conflict, and that's a bad thing. And we've been brought up or culturized in most organizations to think of conflict as something that we need to mitigate, to resolve, to make go away. Can't we all just get along? And what we're really doing when we're avoiding conflict is we're not dealing with the tough issues. And more importantly than that, we're not making the best decisions because of it. And that's the business impact. Huge business impact. And we see it all the time. People avoid conflict like it's, like it's the plague. Mm-hmm. Right? And you also have the, the, the people impact. When you avoid people or topics that are fraught with uh, potential conflict, you hold back your thoughts and your feelings. Right. And you also end up having to pretend that things are fine. In fact, they may not be for you or others. And that's difficult to kind of work in that environment as well. Mm. And it's difficult when people don't maybe hold the same point of view as you and you don't want to wade into those mucky waters. So avoiding conflict essentially sows the seeds of discontent against uh, amongst your team members and your divisions. And you begin to degrade and diminish the level of trust within an organization. Right. And that's huge, right? So this, this is when meetings, um, this is when the meeting after the meeting starts, right? So when the yeah. trust starts to go away, this is where our behavior starts to pick up. Um, and we start talking about, uh, we get in little squirrel meetings and talk about things. We talk about other people behind their backs. We start standing up shadow organizations because those of us who want to believe the same thing all start working in one direction. Um, Mm -hmm. decisions get made without full disclosure. We don't share the context of a decision because we don't want to, uh, open the door for what the conflict might be. And the sad thing is none of it's really ill intended, right? Most of the time people don't start out thinking, well, if we can talk frankly, then we'll just, you know, if we can't talk frankly, I'm just going to throw a wrench in the whole thing. They're not, they're not out there trying to make trouble, but we just inadvertently go there and it becomes troublesome. We're, we're generally having... Um, side conversations and making quiet decisions with the intention of doing the right things as we see them, right? We're all trying to move forward because we still want to achieve the goals as we see them, building whatever kind of coalition of people we can gather around our viewpoint. Right, right. I always talk about that as the water cooler, Mm. that evil water cooler where people gather (laughs) and and chat about, have that meeting after the meeting. Like, Mm -hmm. stop it. If you're having meetings after the meeting in your organization, anybody listening to this, stop it today. Right. (laughs) And we talked last time about how so many things are reduced to communication and problems, right? In our last podcast, mm. communication is critical. And um, this it's a big one in all organizations. And, and so much conflict can be avoided if just you had better communication. So when we use the word conflict, what do you think? What, what, how are you describing it? What are we really talking about here, Jen? Good question. And an excellent place to start. I like to ask the question when we talk about conflict, when I meet with teams and executives, and I start with, what's the difference between a problem and a conflict? Great question. I'm betting you get a lot of deer in the headlights staring back at me when you (laughs) ask that one. I do, right? People don't really think about that. 
Um, we generally see most things as a problem that we can solve, right? We live in that management mindset. But the key difference is that problems are rational, right? They are a thinking man's game. When we can and we can devise solutions to problems, we can test it out. We can see if they address the issue, and then we can make all the necessary adjustments and move on. Right? Problem solved. Completely. All right. But when it comes to conflict, this is generally a problem that has gone unaddressed for a long time. So it's escalated. So it starts as a problem, but it escalates to a conflict. Um, because it has high impact for people at an internal level, which means it's pushing up against their values and beliefs. So what that really means, it's emotionally driven. So the shorthand, mm. problems are rational, driven by the mind, the thinking. Conflicts are driven by the heart. They're emotional. Do you so, have any examples? Yeah. Um, so let's say you've got a person on your team that does really, really good work. They're excellent really outstanding at the details, great analysis, super articulate. And when they contribute, it's a game changer for everyone, right? They really, it's, it's important that they participate and, and, and their work is contributed. However, maybe they're always late with the work and they, and they miss meetings because they're overcommitted. Mm -hmm. So the key here word is always, right? So if they're always late, no matter how many times you speak to them and they promise they'll get stuff in or they'll show up to the meeting, they don't. And over time, because this goes on and on, it stops being a problem and then it escalates into a conflict because there's no solution. And everyone on the team starts to get angry and fed up, which is where the emotional side starts to engage, right? Everyone right. becomes emotional about it as opposed to rational. So this is, this is brought on by the conflict between the value we hold as a team member where you show up, right? You respect others' uh, time, you contribute, and you, and you bring the work in, uh, in on time as expected. Um, but this person consistently lets us down on this. So it's rude, it's insensitive, it's selfish, it's pushing against my values and my truths about how teams work. Right, right. And again, communication and trust is that underlying piece, right? Right. So I have another example. So I can tell you right now I'm working with a client group. I've been working with them since, uh, they're about eight months now. I'm actually going in to do a little bit of work with them again this week. Uh, and they don't engage in conflict mm. at all. Mm. They they just don't. And, and they they avoid it. And the reason they don't is that one team member on this team, on this team gets upset. They can't have and it, like a rational conversation about a topic, a topic that's difficult because this emotional reaction pops in all the time. Mm. So instead, they avoid it and they talk about the person when they're not around, right? So back to that water cooler. Mm. Uh, but I gotta say, like, there's a couple of different, which is what I talked to them about. There's, there's a couple of different ways of conflict, right? Or looking at conflict. One is task conflict, which is about the business topic or a task at hand. And you should be able to talk about those things within an organization, right? Without this emotional piece right. popping in, right? The other piece is personal conflict, which is really about the person. And that shouldn't in, uh, kind of be brought forward into an organization. Uh, but if you're talking about task conflict, something is about, uh, you know, that you're discussing that is organizational, mm -hmm. that you shouldn't have an emotional reaction. So with this group, we've been working on defining what task conflict is and how I need to individually own it and make it productive. So it's been a long process, I gotta say, because it's deep rooted, right? Mm. There's a lot of history with this group. They've been they've been avoiding for a long time. <laughs> and, so, and so, you know, the, the, with this group to try to get that that uh, personal reaction out of the way, it's really it's how they're engaging today. And so trying to make that change and having them engage in productive task conflict is really the only thing that's going to help improve the relationships and the culture. Right, right, exactly. So we're really obvious about what we all want to avoid <laughs> in conflict, right? When in fact, what we know is we can't possibly avoid it. It's going to be there. It's going to happen regardless. So kind of bringing that to the table and, and giving it a name. Right, right. So productive conflict is what? It sounds really counterintuitive <laughs> if you ask me. <laughs> right. So it's the practice. Like, so here's the Kung Fu part. Uh, You've got to embrace conflict in a way that says, if we're going to get 
if we're going to get better at being in conflict, we actually are going to get more out of it. So Mm -hmm. it's really kind of embracing the notion that conflict is going to be there. And it's knowing that when we think of conflict, if we stand in that moment, we're going to be able to make better decisions. We're going to be able to have better conversations. We're going to learn more and then we're going to be able to progress. Whereas if we stand outside of conflict and avoid it and mitigate it and stand back from it, we're going to limit or sometimes completely negate our ability to even progress. Yeah. And it, you see it all the time. I see, you know, when I'm doing strap planning sessions, I see it. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I'm really thinking that many of our listeners are probably thinking, this sounds crazy. And we're, we're suggesting that maybe they need to argue more. But it's not about arguing. Productive conflict is, is a skill where arguing isn't, it's not arguing. It's part of the emotional intelligence skill set. Because when things get pushed against our beliefs and values, we have an emotional response, right? So okay. The feeling comes first um, when we're in a place of conflict. The conversation comes when we try to articulate how we're feeling. And if, if we let our emotions drive, then the conflict becomes more like arguing or fighting. Right, right. However, right, so emotional intelligence, if we're aware of our feelings in the moment and how those feelings can impact we can make a better choice about how we respond to the feelings. So our impact is less about arguing, can be more and more focused on maybe discovering and sharing, allowing ourselves the space in the conversation to come to a mutual understanding and a decision that feels more like a solution, right? But, but you have to have trust, right? You know, you can't have absolutely, this absolutely a good basis of trust. Right, right. And you can't really get to trust when you're in that in that fight and protect, right? So it's the mm-hmm. process of discovery and sharing. It's how we, what I say, let go of the feeling, the need, the need to fight and protect because conflicts are resolved, not solved. And that's mm. a key distinction in language, right? We resolve conflict and we solve problems. So resolution, when you deal with strong feelings, it's about letting go of that feeling and you and the interesting thing is, is you really can't control your feelings, right? You can't stop feeling or, or not. You're just going to feel what you feel when you feel it. But when you get into a place of sharing and discovery, it's that language, that conversation, that willingness to stand there is that's how you start to let go of them and stop, mm-hmm. stop feeling so threatened. Right, right. And you have to have the space for that. Mm-hmm. An organization will have to have, let it create that space. And the letting go then happens through the conversation. That's the key, right? Talk about Kung Fu. It's a practice. When we're, you know, because we're in an, in an emotional state, it's difficult to maintain self-awareness at a level that gives us room to consider our choices on how to respond, right? Fight or flight. Right. So some days you can do it really, really well. And other days, maybe not so much. The key thing here is that the, is the productive part, how well you can stand in the moment of your own emotion and deal with the issues that are pushing on your beliefs and values, right? It's uncomfortable, no doubt about it, but that's where your learning and your growth and your progress comes from, right? If you're not, if you are comfortable, you're, you're not learning if you're not, and you're not progressing. Conflict then is how we can start to progress as a team as organizations, right? It's a tool that we've been avoiding when we should be picking up the tool and really leveraging what it can teach us. Yeah, absolutely. So I think what we're really doing is paring it down and clarifying for our listeners what they can do in the moment. Right? How, uh, however, if there's, uh, however, there's some more to it than you can, no, I can, this isn't slow for me. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so what we're really doing, I think, is we're paring it down and, and clarifying what they can, our listeners can do in the moment, right? What There's some more that they can do to maybe do some, some stuff on their own. So they got to be right. able to start self-reflecting on how they think in that moment of conflict. Like at that moment in time, really, what's popping up for you is what we're asking them to do. And you can do this. I'm sure when you think about specific people or projects or instances, when you uh, you know that they're going to create conflict for you, and they're generally these things that you're frustrated with, and you know it because you think about them, and when you, when you do think about them, the emotions return just by thinking about it. Right, right, 
you need to reflect and ask yourself when I'm in that meeting with that person or on that team, what story am I telling myself Mm -hmm. about that person or that issue or that thing? Is it true? What question do I need to start asking to change the conversation? Right? What is the automatic thought I'm having? And until you can do that, you don't really, you're not really able to progress through the questions that you can then start to ask out loud to move forward and to reap the benefits of conflict. Yeah. So you think back to the team that I've been working with. That's exactly that's that point, right? What emotions come up for all the other people on this team when that one person gets so emotional when they start to engage in any kind of conflict? And so mm-hmm. that's a really good, a, a really a good point to start. Is like, how do you, um, how do you show up in the state of conflict? What, are the, what comes up for you? So that's some serious homework for all of our listeners to begin to practice some transformational Kung Fu to stand in the moment of conflict. Indeed. And if you listen to our podcast about accountability, we talked about this kind of toward the end, the fact that conversations about accountability can feel like we're headed into conflict. Mm -hmm. So this skill directly is associated with accountability. There's some emotional intelligence to standing in the moment with people when we feel as though we're pushing up against someone's beliefs about how they're performing or values around what's important for the organization. I just want to be able to connect those dots. Yeah, and I think, you know, Jen, both you and I are, are um, partners of Wiley who do the five behaviors of a cohesive team program, right? Mm-hmm. So you talk That's about right. those first two pieces, trust and conflict. They're, they're big, big cornerstones of how organizations can be better. So, you know, it's a great program. Exactly. In fact, uh, speaking of Wiley and assessments, they've just come up with a DISC product, right? That's called Productive Conflict, mm-hmm. which is a is a great way to get your organization started on, um, and I think an easy way into understanding what some of these automatic thoughts are yeah. that um, you're having. And what's great about Wiley, here's a plug, here's a plug for Wiley. Yeah, we love them. <laughs> is they... Um, their report structure is very accessible. So what I loved about what they did on productive conflict is they actually provide a list of common thoughts that people have, Mm -hmm. right? So this I equate very much to, this is kind of what I would call self-destructive behavior, like behavior modification light Mm -hmm. of really helping people start to get an understanding of how to modify the thought, which will modify the behavior. Right, right. Yeah, and, and again, I, I keep using the word showing up, but how do you show up in that moment of conflict and, and being able to self-identify it? Mm-hmm. It's, it's huge, mm-hmm. it's huge. So, it's yeah. huge. So, yeah, so if you need help self-identifying, let us know. We can, we can set you up on productive conflict yeah, assessments, that's right. That's right. Which, will, which will get you started. So, um, sure. anyway, hoping, hoping this was helpful, and I'm looking forward to what our next topic is. Do we know what that is yet? Oh, do we know what that is? I think it's going to be probably something around uh, trust. Trust. Ugh, big topic. We could probably do a whole year on trust. Probably. It's probably it's a thing that gets in the way of in most organizations, that's for sure. So, so Jen, how do people find you? Uh, if people want to get to me, they can find me on uh, managementpossible.com. Uh, there's a contact page. Uh, reach out if you're interested. Let's have a conversation. Great. And, and you? Yeah, satoriconsultinginc.ca is where we can be found. And uh, again, we talk about li- Wiley, we, we kind of gave them that big plug, but uh, certainly on my site, all the different assessments and things can be found there. So I'm not sure if you've added them onto yours, Jen, but there's yep, great yep. content there for uh, our listeners to find out more about how they can engage in productive conflict. Exactly, exactly. You can come to either site and uh, download. Uh, We've got sample reports up there and all kinds of stuff. So check us out and uh, check us out on all of your uh, podcast stations. Listen to the other ones we've got if you thought this one was good. And we'd love to hear your feedback. Excellent. All right, Jen. Talk to you soon. All right. All right. Till next time. Thanks, Sandy. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening and please visit Sandy's website at satoriconsultinginc.ca. That's S-A-T-O-R-I consultinginc.ca and Jen's website at managementpossible.com. Thanks again.